Hello, welcome back. I'm Noreen Burke, owner of Call Clutter Fairy Home Organizing. I am a professional organizer, but this is my YouTube channel, The Crafty Organizer. This is where I get to share my love of organizing tips, crafts, DIYs, and upcycles. You have been asking so much for a tour of my backyard, which I love. Um, now, I want to say before I show you and take you on the tour, uh, I am by no means qualified to be the person who says, here's what you should do in your backyard. Uh, but I do have a love for gardening. I always have. And I love creating little spaces where I can move around and enjoy my backyard from different perspectives, different times of the day. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share it with you. I'm actually a little embarrassed about my backyard because we are renters and um, what's that saying? Putting lipstick on a pig, this pig needs more than lipstick, but this is what I've done with it. So let's take a tour. All right, you guys, like I said, I'm a little embarrassed about this, but <laughs> this is my backyard. Uh, it is all, it's a huge backyard, let me say that first. And half of it is all concrete and the rest of it is grass, which is great. We chose this house because it had a big yard. My kids could run around and play. So um, I was not happy with having so much concrete. So it has taken me seven years to come to the point where we're at right now of having all of these little spots of greenery and things growing. So let me take you on a quick tour. So this is coming from my back door and the gate to get into the yard. And I've chosen to have my barbecue here, so it's just easy when I do cook out here, which if you've followed me before, you know isn't often, I'm not a cook. <laughs> but I love the rustic, kind of shabby chic look. Um, and I actually like everything being weathered. So if you're looking at these things um, and it's not your style, that's okay. I really like the weathered look. So I built this just out of a little wooden piece of lattice so that it would hide the trash cans so that when you're hanging out back here, if you're anywhere other than standing right at the door, this is what you see, which to me looks much more appealing than seeing that. So I did that just by taking a couple of little L brackets and I zip tied the lattice to the L bracket and then the L bracket to the fence. And that's been up for about five years, so I think it's done very well. The vines are just coming back to life. In the summer, it's beautiful and green and lush, but in the winter, it's a little sad looking. These were some of those cabinet doors that I had found, and um, these were already weathered, and I've loved it going further. I DIY'd this with a little hook, and in the summer, I have little flowers hanging in here. So I'm going to whitewash those and get them ready for the new season. Normally, I use this little empty toy box for my donations. I'll throw them in the bags and throw them in there. And our donation service comes and picks up about every other week, so I just put them out. But right now, you know, during COVID, uh, this is my giant stack of donations. And I have a tarp underneath and on top to protect things. And as soon as we're able to, this is all going to go away. But for right now, I just have to uh, leave it there. So we'll continue down the long pathway of my driveway. So this would, in a normal situation when, uh, before somebody built stairs with cement coming out of my house, this is where you would drive to get into the garage, but that's, that's not even a possibility anymore. So I'm gonna try and explain the things that I've made, but if I uh, zoom in on something and you have a question, just leave me a, a comment below in the description. So. Somebody had gotten rid of a bookcase and I took the panels apart to use the particle board and one of these pieces was really big and I decided to just take chalk paint and paint something funny on it and that has been out here for three years and has weathered just fine. So uh, that's why I love upcycling strange things. So yes, the edges have gotten a little bit weathered over time, but that doesn't bother me at all. It's, it's definitely held up. And I haven't reapplied the chalk either. And this was just one of those 
crayon, chalk crayons, not even paint. So if I did want to wash it off, it would take just a little bit of the goo gone and it would come right off and I could do a new chalk design. You have seen my little crafting bench and I've got a bunch of little succulents right now that I'm ready to make a new new planter garden out of and my daughter made me this to plant a garden is to believe in tomorrow which absolutely sums up how I feel right now. So coming back this way we're heading towards my favorite spot. I made this little welcome sign out of picket fences and this was one of the times I did paint instead of using my Cricut uh, and it, it worked just fine. So here's the space that I love so much. I got this little gazebo and it's only five feet deep and eight feet wide and it's meant to go over a barbecue. Uh, but I did not have the budget for one of those big giant gazebos and this one was about $70 and I customized it by re-drilling holes so that this shelf which is meant to come way up here so it's waist height for when you're barbecuing I just drilled holes lower so when I'm sitting in this chair I have a place to put my coffee my phone my book if I'm reading that and you guys this is absolutely my favorite spot I have not lowered this one yet but I'm going to so over here I had a neighbor who got new windows and they were getting rid of their old glass pane windows from the 40s so I scooped those up um, I still haven't known what to do with them but I've loved them just being on the fence and I just anchored them with a couple of screws and those have been up for about five years now so again those those have done just fine I love that they're weathered and I keep choosing plants that I can repropagate easily so spider plants because they're nice and lush and you know my little succulents that I love to propagate now right now I do have a jasmine back here that's starting to go crazy and I love the bright green leaves on him but usually he's sad so this is a new spot and I, I think he's very much liking that location. Another person was getting rid of a wooden ladder that was kind of rickety. I swooped in on it and just lightly whitewashed it. I do have it leaning back against the fence and because this area isn't very flat I just put a little piece of wood in the very bottom to prop it up so that my ladder rungs were level and I use it as a plant stand. And this is probably one of my favorite decor pieces in the backyard. So anytime I get something new and I want to add to it, if it doesn't match what I have, I either lightly whitewash it or I'll just go on in and paint it. I'm not afraid of doing that. And that's how I've gotten everything to kind of look cohesive and match because they certainly didn't when I first got them. This is a new table and I'm going to be painting it the same color uh, that I painted my potter's bench. So be on the lookout for when I upcycle that. And you can see my pendant garden is really thriving. I did this one about three and a half, maybe four months ago. Boy, is he doing well. And then this was the curbside upcycle that I did. And he's got some little spots that are really starting to take off as well. So eventually this will be super lush and pieces will be hanging over. There are a few that are starting to branch out already and hang down, which makes me so happy. So we're just going to keep watching him and nurturing him. Because this is small, I just keep rotating it every couple days to face the sun again so that things grow kind of upright. In the back I have an old party light candle holder. It's meant to have a stand but I hung it on the fence and I used the areas where the candles are supposed to be for new little plants to hang and this is just a nice little rustic look for me in this area. I had talked about, if you watched my potting shed DIY, I had talked about these little spring-loaded cake pans and I did make this little garden and I'm meaning to give this to someone, I just haven't dropped it off yet, but I really like the way that one turned out. And then back in this corner, someone, if you had, I, I don't think I had mentioned this before, someone was getting rid of these amazing, let me go back, someone was getting rid of these fabulous leaded glass doors. There were four of them and I wanted to make some sort of lantern out of them, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. So instead I've just 
set them on my fence and I've got a nail holding them in place so that they can't fall. And I actually just love the way they look on their own. When the lights are on at night, I have these little LED Christmas lights that always come on at nighttime. They kind of sparkle against the beveled edges on the glass and I love it. So I have three along my fence and they just inter they um, go every other from the cabinet door that hangs just to give some something to look at on the fence because otherwise this is a long kind of scary nothingness and I've tried doing planters along here it's just they get so much sun it's really hard to keep something alive in them so I've kind of given up and just gone with pots that I can rotate but I have the fourth leaded glass panel back here and this was another curbside throwaway I don't even know if you could see it. It's a little spiraled cart and it's got fake wheels on it, but it's supposed to look like something you could roll. And I just used it the way it was. I liked the way it was rusted and patinaed. And because this is a mostly shady spot, it only gets an hour or two of sun. This is where my fern is doing well and some of my other succulents that don't like as much sun. I used a simple Dollar Tree coat hanger on top of the door and I got to hang a little wreath and a little sign that says flowers just to give it some visual interest and I use those same Dollar Tree door ham door hangers that you're supposed to put a robe and a towel just to hang lanterns and every once in a while if it's a lightweight plant I'll use it for that too so you're familiar with this area because you've seen it before in my tour but that is right outside of my office, which you've also seen before. So on my little sitting area here, I have four chairs. And behind that, we, I have one of those umbrellas that have a side stand. So there isn't a stand in the middle, it's off to the side. And instead of just having that as a tripping hazard, I put flagstone on top and filled it with plants. Again, just so it's something pretty, and I like looking at all of that when I'm in my office. So I'm gonna kind of walk backwards to where my driveway starts and give you a scope of the rest of the backyard. So if I pan over, again, you see it's a lot of concrete. And I've built a couple of little planters. These are just those little curvy ones that I filled with dirt, not even a lot because succulents don't need a lot. And this is taking off very well there. And anytime I see somebody getting rid of a chair, or even if it's wobbly, I snake it and <laughs> use it as a plant stand. This was a farm table that we had in my garage. It was my work table, but I just recently donated it to the cause of our quarantine life. And we painted it, which the kids had a blast spending a whole day painting and we have turned it into a makeshift ping pong table, which we have been having a lot of fun with. I used chalk paint on our water heater storage unit to make a scoreboard. And then coming back around here is just another sitting area I've created. This was a recent find. Somebody was getting rid of this dresser that was a vintage solid wood piece. It was lovely couldn't figure out why they were getting rid of it until I took it home and took it apart to clean it and see what I could do with it and I realized it had several termite nests in it. Now I live in Southern California where termites are an issue. Our house already has some termite damage unfortunately so I just knocked the nests off and it is now going to be an outside piece. I cannot bring it inside and risk getting termites on the inside. So I did just recently find out that a piece of glass I've been holding onto fits on the top. So I'm gonna put that on there so it doesn't get too, too damaged. But I'm using this to hold the wood for my fire pit, for extra chemicals for my garden, and I use the very top for any extra small gardeny tools that I didn't want on my potter's bench. This was a piece I made out of a cabinet that somebody dismantled. And I got these little baskets from I think I got these from Big Lots. So they're just on with two screws. I just have two little screws in them and then these baskets rest on it and I was able to put little plants in it. I had this in my kitchen initially with fruit in it, uh, but I decided to simplify my kitchen and this thing behind it is really ugly. I don't know what it's even for on the house. It's empty, uh, but 
I wanted to cover it. So this seems like a really nice thing to cover it with instead of just having that eyesore out. So that's something I used to cover it with. And then I have this art piece that is supposed to be again for candles that I found on the side of the road and I'm using it for my succulents. So that is this area. I have a swing to enjoy and we just sit out here and have bonfires on occasion. I do have a fireplace in the back. This is one of the ugly spots of my home, so I'm so sorry, but here's the truth of me. This started to be a planter bed. When we first moved in, I really wanted to have a vegetable garden. I have not gotten anything to grow in this backyard unless it's a container. I have since learned from our neighbors that people who had lived here previously used to do auto mechanic work and they would dump the oil or the gas or whatever other chemicals they were using in the dirt. So I don't know how long it takes for those things dissipate, but I have yet to get anything to grow except weeds. <laughs> so this was my attempt at building a raised bed so that I could have some gardens and since then I've tried making it cute in other ways. I found this old uh, cover for a fireplace and I'm going to take it apart, redo it so that's pretty again and then see if I can put some container gardens here so this looks better but this is a project I'll be working on because it's definitely an eyesore right now. Okay so we've just come from my area where I do my bonfires where I have ping pong and then of course my favorite area. So the backyard is shaped like a big U. So here's the one side of the U, and then this is the crazy part of my giant backyard. It goes straight back, and then it goes all the way over again. So a lot of grass, and uh, we've enjoyed this, but it's so big that I never know what to do with it. So we have this other little patio area, which I've recently gotten a table and umbrella for. And the wind came the other day and broke my umbrella. I was really bummed with that. But um, here are those little wreaths I made the other day. This is a project that's going to be in the works. This was a bookcase that I made probably 10 or 15 years ago. And I'm trying to figure out how I want to repurpose it to fit in here as an entertainment spot. These are some of the leftover succulents that I've made and have yet to give away to friends and neighbors. So those will be finding new homes very soon. And I want to do something with these too. So this, this whole little spot is just truly a work in progress. This arch that I have out here, a neighbor had a backyard wedding. Let me go from a different direction. And they had built this lovely, lovely arch for their daughter's wedding. And uh, they didn't want it when it was done. So as soon as they said, hey, do you want this? I didn't even hesitate. I didn't know where it was going to live, but I knew I wanted it. So what we usually do is we pull the curtains, ooh, sorry, we pull the curtains closed and that gives us plenty of shade because this house is west facing. So in the afternoon, the wet, this is a fully sunny spot when the sun is setting on us for dinner time. So if I pull those little curtains closed, we have almost a little cute room back here and I have lots of little lights everywhere to make it uh, bright enough. And I also have an outside light to turn on there. So this is a really fun area when we're having dinner. It's like my little outside dining spot. The rest of the yard though, you know, when the kids were little, I had a jungle gym out here, but once they grew out of it, I went ahead and gave it to another family that so they could enjoy it with their little ones. We don't know what to do with the rest of this space. So I did plant this tree in this little garden here, and I like that. We have a hammock that stretches from that tree to this tree, and that's a great spot that the kids like to hang out in. But this expanse, we don't know. We don't know what to do with it. Any of the ideas I have are really expensive to do. I would love to have a big shade garden here or a path that meanders and takes you to different sitting areas. Uh, but, you know, money is, money is an object for me. So I have to be limited in what I do. And this whole corner too. This was a sand pit when we moved in. Since then, the weeds have taken it over, so I just try and keep them at bay. It would have been a great spot for a trampoline. I'm guessing they used to have a swimming pool there. We thought about having the fire pit, but this whole back corner has a lot of natural wooded area or um, open area behind it, and I am terrified of spiders. And our backyard has a big issue with black widows and brown widows. So all of these concrete areas 
I can control with peppermint oil and that's lovely, but I can't do anything with the natural areas. The spiders just don't care. They are able to ignore it. So this area, once it gets past dusk, is just not safe. I've checked it out before and once I get past about eight of these scary spiders that I see, I'm done. I'm not even comfortable out here. So I let them have this part of the yard and they let me have the rest of the yard. <laughs> So these big giant bougainvilleas were here when I moved in. I like them. I'm trying to learn about how to treat them better because when they're in full color, they're spectacular. Like this one's doing really well. The purple one does okay. The orange one is always struggling. So I don't know if it needs more nutrients or again, if one of the previous owners poured something there and it has just been struggling to survive ever since. So if you know anything about bougainvilleas and maybe what nutrient I can add to the dirt to help them grow, let me know in the comments below. But you guys, that's the whole backyard. So everything back here has been basically saved from the roadside or bought used, nothing except for my gazebo uh, and that big sideways umbrella was purchased. Every single other thing back here was um actually i lied my black and white cushions i got from lowe's last year and they do still have them this year so if you like these black and white cushions you can get those from lowe's i put three new ones on my swing so that they matched and that was a pretty expensive endeavor that's not something i've ever done before because i had to buy 10 of them and i got them on sale for i think 28 dollars a piece so that was probably the most expensive thing that i've done in this backyard but this umbrella was purchased and then that gazebo in the back was purchased through Amazon and it has been one of my favorite investments because it really anchored that spot as a, a little resting area. What did you guys think of my backyard? I know there's certain things that if I owned this place, I would absolutely change and redo, but I am working with what I have, how I can utilize it, and I was really happy to show you some of the DIYs I've been doing along the way that I haven't shared with you in the past. Uh, I'm not always sure what you guys will like or not like, and sometimes I just think, good heavens, I've lost my mind. <laughs> so if there's anything uh, that you would like to see more closely or you have questions on, make sure to leave it in the comments below. And I would so enjoy getting to see your backyard. So take me on a tour of an area of your backyard that you've restructured or an area of your garden you're super proud of. In my description below, you'll see a link to my Facebook page. And that's where I'm really enjoying getting to know you better and get to interact with you and share pictures and videos of things that you've done. Thanks so much for watching today. Please take a second to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in two days. Bye.